Greetings, and welcome to our first trek at the San Diego Zoo. Today, we will begin our adventure with a quick walk through of the Fern Canyon. Here, we will begin our immersion into the natural world that surrounds us. This is a perfect place to set the atmosphere as we start exploring the Lost Forest Trails. On this peaceful stroll, we will see a wide variety of ferns, from the four-foot sword fern to the towering 40-foot tree ferns. And the path will eventually take us past Formosa palms, Easter lily vines, and orchids. It is my hope that the Lost Forest will give us a deeper appreciation for these majestic animals, their natural homes, as well as a better understanding of the dangers that they are facing and the rough road ahead of us in saving them. This is a place for us to listen to the calls of the birds, walk past rushing streams, cascading waterfalls, as well as take a moment to stop and smell the fragrant flowers and enjoy the gardens of beautiful exotic plants that surround us. When you first spot a silver leaf langer, you'll notice that it packs a pot belly. This is caused by a nutritionally poor leaf diet. Their enlarged stomach contains bacteria for fermentation and holds a large amount of food. As newborns, silver leaf langers have bright orange fur. It is somewhere between the fourth and fifth month that the orange turns to the darkish gray seen in adults. Their tail is primarily used for balance as they move through the treetops and is not used to hold or manipulate objects. They can be found along the forest, mountains, coastal areas, swamps, and rivers across several countries in Southeast Asia. Next up is a shared habitat for the largest arboreal mammal, the orangutan, and the loudest gibbon, the siamang. Let's learn a few things about these resident apes. Orangutans live in the swamp and tropical forest on the Southeast Asian islands of Borneo, in Sumatra. The Sumatran orangutan is now found only in the dense tropical forest of the Indonesian island of Sumatra. Satu the male was born on March 16, 1995. He shows the characteristics of a dominant male with his long hair and cheek pads. You can often catch him by the waterfalls or relaxing near the front of this exhibit. The young and entertaining Aisha was born on October 15, 2013. She loves playing with the others in this exhibit, especially Siamang Salamit, who was born on November 12th of 2018. There's never a dull moment with these two as they are constantly monkeying around. Karen, also known as Care Bear, was born on July 11th of 1992. She made medical history on August 27th of 1994 when at two years old she became the first orangutan in the zoo to undergo open heart surgery. At the time, Karen weighed 22 pounds and her heart murmur as well as a penny sized hole in the heart was considered fatal without surgical correction. The operation lasted seven hours and the cardiothoracic surgeon stated if Karen were human, I tell her parents that everything went fine and her prognosis is excellent. In 2021, she was also among the first non-humans to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Karen is the subject of a book entitled, Karen's Heart, The True Story of a Brave Baby Orangutan. She has become a favorite among zoo visitors and is described as being stubborn and willful and likes to roll rather than walk. Hinda, Aisha's mother, was born on July 23rd of 1986. Hunky, the male Siamang, was born on October 18th of 1983. Eloise is the female Siamang, who was born on April 17th of 1981. Unke and Eloise have been a bonded pair since 1987. They have had five offspring and have been successful in raising all of them. And although usually sweet-tempered, they like to shake things up with their orangutans by instigating a bit of mischief from time to time. The largest species of gibbons, siamangs are well suited for life in the treetops. Siamangs do not build nests, they sleep sitting upright on branches in the higher parts of trees. Nearby, a dedication plaque tells us about Ken Allen, who may be the most famous orangutan that has lived at the zoo. He became internationally famous in the 1980s from his creative ways of escaping from his enclosure. 
Born on February 13, 1971, Ken Allen, a Boranian orangutan, was born and raised at the San Diego Zoo. His name comes from keeper Ken Willingham and security guard Ben Allen, who rescued him when his mother neglected him. Ken was hand-raised in the nursery at the Children's Zoo. Over the years, his playful spirit and intelligence challenged his keepers. He learned how to unscrew bolts with his fingers, even the ones on his nursery crib, and would likewise unscrew every light bulb he could get his hands on. This childproof playpen, he would also remove the metal mesh top and move about the nursery at night, hopping back in in the morning and putting the playpen back together. It took several times of him doing this before the keepers caught on. He learned how to climb the steep incline in the back of his habitat and slip over the walls. He also learned how to unlatch locks, doors, etc. No matter what the keepers did to keep him from escaping, he would find a new way out. These escapades earned him the nickname Harry Houdini. On June 13th, July 29th, and again on August 13th of 1985, Ken Allen peacefully strolled around the zoo looking at the other animals. He never took violent or aggressive action towards these animals or the zoo patrons. This had become a game to him, and he would even sit at the edge of the exhibit and wait for the keepers to let him back in. He taught other orangutans the art of using branches in a way a human would use a crowbar to get out. Zoo officials hired experienced rock climbers to find every finger, toll, and foothold in the enclosure, spending around $40,000 to eliminate the identified holes. Unfortunately, Ken developed B-cell lymphoma, a blood cancer in the lymphoids. He passed away on December 1st of 2000 at the age of 29. This a clever orangutan left behind many memories and a fan club, as well as shirts, bumper stickers, and even a song entitled The Ballad of Ken Allen. Upon his death, he left behind a legacy and many memories. This legendary orangutan has become a local folk hero, and rightfully so. These highly intelligent red apes are now unfortunately extinct in much of Asia. Most of their forest habitats have been destroyed to make room for palm oil and coffee plantations. Poachers often kill orangutan mothers and sell their young to the legal pet trade. I encourage you on your next visit to the San Diego Zoo, or even better, on your next visit to your local zoo, to read the signs around the habitats. There's good information about the effects of the palm oil industry and habitat destruction caused by logging and other human activities. We can also learn what part we can take to help reverse this and what organizations zoos are involved with to help save these animals. The smallest of the three walkthrough aviaries in the Lost Forest, the Parker Aviary houses birds from the rainforest to Central and South America. Here we will roam through this peaceful aviary, taking in the sights and sounds, and take a glimpse into another aviary that is enclosed inside. There are 15 different species of birds that reside here. Only two of them I didn't spy over the course of my six day visit. The yellow rumped cacique and the silver beaked tanager. This aviary also housed a pair of golden lion tamarins. The ring till has pointed claws. These strong long toes are an adaptation that allows them to sit and nest in trees. They are surface feeders, and chicks waterproof their feathers by rubbing against their mother's abdominal plumage and attaining the oil there. Sun bedrooms are not social birds and are relatively quiet, however they do make a mechanical rattling sound. Crested arapindolas are a type of blackbird. Females will weave a spherical nest out of palm fibers and grass, and these nests can reach up to six feet in length. Each colony has a dominant male, their plumage has a musty smell due to the oil from the preen gland. Inca terns make their nest in burrows, caves, and cavities, 
Sometimes we use a nest of Humboldt penguins. They swoop down from the air to snatch tiny fish like anchovies and silver sides from the top few inches of water. This species coexists with Humboldt penguins and is also restricted to the Humboldt current. It can be identified by its white mustache, red-orange feet, and beak, as well as dark gray body. Black spotted barbettes are usually found in pairs or small flocks. Their main diet consists of fruit and nectar as well as spiders and insects. The blue-crowned motmot found in eastern Mexico. They have a wide range of habitats to live in from tropical dry forest, woodlands, and rainforests. They can usually be found near the water. The National Bird of Peru, the Andean Cock of the Rock, has a diet that consists of small frogs, reptiles, fruits, and insects. The males are not involved with chick raising or nest building, but will confront other males with this place of jumping, noisy squawking, wing flapping, and bill snapping. Females build their nest from vegetation and mud, which is held together with their saliva and is in the shape of a concave cup. They usually lay two eggs at a time and it takes 28 days to incubate. These bright and beautiful birds have become one of my favorites to watch. Coco toucans have a loud frog-like call that can be heard up to a half a mile away. It is also a very poor flyer, usually moving from tree to tree by hopping. The toucan's beak is light and hollow, made of a protein keratin with thin rods of bone to support it and has a similar consistency to a hard sponge. This bird in its native regions is associated with evil spirits and is thought to be an incarnation of a demon. Gray winged trumpeters can be found in groups of 6 to 20 individuals, often following groups of tree dwelling animals where they pick up the seeds and fruit which are dropped. Capuchin birds' diets consist of fruits and insects, and males gather in leks where they sing a song that sounds like a chainsaw or a cow mooing, hence their other common name, calf bird. Until recently, blue headed macaws were considered to be quite common in the wild. You can identify this species by its striking blue head on a mostly green body. Plush crested jays are a very social and noisy bird. They can imitate other bird calls. When food is plentiful, they will hide and store it and have been known to be very curious, approaching humans and sometimes stealing small objects from them. Plate-billed mountain toucans roost in pairs or small family groups and are known to forage together in fruit trees. Here we conclude our first look into San Diego Zoo's Lost Forest. A little ways down the path, we will encounter tigers, hippos, and a wide variety of primates, birds, and a few reptiles. Overall, this is one of my favorite zones in any zoo I've visited, and I'm looking forward to sharing more parts of this fantastic habitat in the near future. Hope you enjoyed learning about these magnificent animals as much as I enjoyed watching and filming them. Thank you for joining me on this trek through the Orangutan Trail and the Parker Aviary. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels everyone.